Thanks to all of you who are entering your names in the chat box in your district. If you could continue to do that if we had some new folks join in. We also have uh, two questions on um, our, our intro screen here. First one, have you, how have you used available reports in SC Lead? If you've had a chance to access the reports, give us a little idea in the chat box of how you've been able to use those available reports while we're waiting a couple of minutes for others to join. And if there is a particular report that you found particularly helpful, go ahead and, and stick that in the chat box also. Just want to get some feedback from the field. So while we're waiting, please enter your name in the chat box with your district and give us some feedback on those two questions. So it's 2 o'clock. To be respectful of everybody's time, we're going to go ahead and um, get started. Um, just for the purposes of orienting you to the chat feature, on the top gray menu on the right, there's a little icon with the person with their hand raised. Um, you can use the options below that to update your status, um, to give us feedback on volume, pace, or content. To the left are the camera, microphone, and speaker icons. You can click on your microphone to activate it if you want to share something um, with the entire group. It will turn green and the microphone icon will show up next to your name in the attendee box. And we do encourage you to do that. We've got several places where we're going to stop and, and open the floor for questions today. So click on the microphone again and your mic will be muted. So thank you for so many folks um, telling us where you're from. Um, thank you for Polly and Erin and Cheryl who have given us feedback on the reports. We're going to pull that in a little later in the presentation. So please continue to participate <coughs> today in office hours. Um, if there's a space and you want to, if there's a space and you want to speak, please hop on the mic and introduce yourself and share with us and your colleagues. Yeah, thanks, Heather. We're going to pull some of these. Um, throughout, weave some of your suggestions throughout the presentation. So here's our agenda for today. We have a ton of useful information to share this month um, because you had such great questions about SC Lead and the rubric implementation process over the past month. We are going to do our best to present today's information in a thoughtful manner. As always, we welcome your questions in the chat box throughout the webinar. To support your understanding, it may also be helpful for you to have SC Lead open, have a tab where SC Lead is open and that you signed into, whether that's in production or if you have access to training. Also know that we are recording this session and we'll post it as soon as it is closed captioned. If you need earlier access, just get in touch with your district contact here in the Office of Educator Effectiveness and Leadership Development. 
Um, so that's a little bit about our agenda. So let's jump right into it. So we always start with this slide because we get questions routinely about what am I what am I required to report? If you have any questions, first of all, about PDEP reporting, please make sure that you contact uh, the Vicki Trothwell for further information. But the good news about classroom-based teacher evaluation data required for reporting is that it has not changed from last year. That's the big takeaway. Um, it has not changed from last year. So please be reminded that data has to be reported for all contract levels and all evaluation types. Evaluation data noted here has to be reported for classroom-based teachers regardless of their content, regardless of their grade level, regardless of their contract level. We continue to get questions about that. But you do need to report the same information which you have here in the four bullets, overall effectiveness rating met not met, next year contract level and hiring status, observation results at the indicator level for those summative evaluations and student learning objective scores. Um, so at the end of the year this is what you're required to report for all of the classroom based teachers. So once data has been entered in SC Lead as some of you know and have shared, district adept contacts can pull reports with this data. So, Faye, they, we had some very interesting uses of reports shared in the chat box. You want to show us a couple of, couple of the neat ones that we were able to share? Sure. Can you hear me? All right. So, we have something from Aaron. Hold on. We're going to fix some audio stuff. All right. So Aaron says, we have used reports to check for duplicate records, staff credentials, and team assignments. We would like to have reports that drill down to the components inside of the eval records so we can determine progress on a larger scale. At this moment, we only see orientation incomplete. Aaron also says that They've used reports to ensure the right contract levels are assigned to the educator. Cheryl says, like Erin, I have used the reports to check for credentials and duplicate records. I would like to be able to see reports with evaluation results, such as areas of refinement, that could be used to inform future professional learning. Polly says, I would like to see a report of items that are incomplete with evaluation. Heather says, we have used the reports to look at overall scores for our teachers so far in each building and district-wide. We would like to have a report that breaks down the indicators so we can look at strengths and weaknesses across the building and the district. Sharon says, I have used reports like Erin, but would, help, would love to have a report that could show the progress of evaluations by the evaluator, school, etc. And it looks like there's a common theme here about being able to get to the details of the um, evaluations, the observations, the progress. Um, we always take in your suggestions. Not that everything is going to be a yes, but we will work on planning and discussing what reports we could um, add to SE Lead. Um, again, we will take all your suggestions into consideration. We're just not promising what will be available next. But we hear you loud and clear. And let me see. OK, we already have a question from Anita. Do you want to go over this now, Julie, or do you want to have this a little later? All right, so Anita, hold on tight. We will go back to your question. Okay, so great feedback. I hope that um, some of you who have not gotten into reports yet have been able to glean something from your colleagues uh, because there are several reports that are listed. They're all able to be downloaded into spreadsheets and manipulated by you. 
Um, we are refining that, as they have said, so hopefully in upcoming webinars we'll be able to share a little more information about digging down into some of the indicator level reports um, for you. But that is definitely on our radar, so thanks for confirming that it needs to be. All right, so that's a little bit about required reporting. We're going to move forward. We're going to come and capture your questions in a little bit. So even if you're feeling behind on the FC League, remember, it's not too late to start. If you need a refresher on SC LEAD or the overall SCTS process um, or help with converting to the online process, don't hesitate to reach out to your ADEPT contact. We show you this screenshot here because there are a wealth of resources on our webpage. If you've had a chance to um, go to our webpage, and we know that several of you have, you'll see that the resources are very user friendly. If you go to ed.sc.gov, click on educators, click on educator effectiveness, that takes us to the page that you see here. And you can click on the burgundy box to the side, which is expanded adept teacher evaluation for resources. Or you can come down to the blue box that's circled in red for additional specific SC lead resources. We also have available in the communications box in Burgundy um, a link to the webinars that we have been able to share. And you also see the, the uh, hyperlink here on the page where you can go and see webinars um, that we've delivered in the past. So whether it's a help guide or a webinar with each step um, inside the scleed.org application, please feel free to share these resources and to access them as often as, as needed. And we're going to talk about sharing these resources in a little bit. So planning ahead. Depending on dates in your ADEPT plan, you should be nearing the end of the first evaluation cycle. For many of you, it's either in December or January. So this is the perfect time for you to reflect on what has occurred and begin planning for spring and summer training. The items we will discuss in this next slide set are reflective of the same type of planning you're going to do um, in the spring, later in the spring with your 2019-2020 ADEPT plan. So let's talk about planning ahead. How to how to build effective training plans for both the new teacher evaluation model, SCTS, and SCB.org. Across the state, districts are falling into two groups. In one group, we have districts that use SC Lead to manage the new rubric evaluation process, SCTS. In the other group are districts that manage the new evaluation process offline or in another system with the intent to upload the required data at the end of the year in sclead.org. So we're going to discuss some planning elements for each group in this next set of slides. So if you are using sclead to manage the process, this slide is for you. If your district is using sclead to manage the SCTS 4.0 rubric evaluation process, here are some suggestions that are specific for you. At this time in the school year, building level principals or evaluators at their schools should have used SC Lead to enter evaluation data and sign preliminary and mid-course conference forms if you're using SC Lead for those two components. We encourage you to check in with your principals to ensure they don't have questions about the system. If they do, your first resource should be the online user manuals. So our first bullet is to make sure your principals know how to use the system if your district is using the system to manage the process. If they don't, your first line of recourse is to direct them to the online user manuals. All principals should know where these resources are online. They're on the Educator Effectiveness webpage, and they are also available within SC Lead. So they are accessible to everybody. If the user manual does not answer their question, encourage them to submit a help ticket to the help desk. We've gotten feedback that the help desk has been very responsive, so they should be able to address most questions um, via email or perhaps a follow-up phone call to the, to the educator or principal. If the help desk does not answer your question, you can direct them to call your regional um, ADEPT contact. 
teachers can also take advantage of these user manuals and resources. All of this information is online and available. Teachers can also submit help tickets. So we want to make sure that not only um, they, uh, principals and teachers know where the resources are, but that they also are accessible, um, ac accessing these resources to support the onboarding of this new system. At this time in the school year, the district should also integrate a review of the district's business rules, not only for SC Lead, but for the overall evaluation process, SCTS 4.0. To integrate a review of the district's business rules regarding it, the new evaluation system in existing training for principals, or use an existing communication tool to share a review of the business rules. For example, teachers and principals should know the scoring approach used by the district. They should know how teams are formed. So please be sure to discuss any guidance on retention of scripting notes and district expectations regarding lesson scripts. For example, if an educator will be placed on, for example, a local improvement plan, what documentation does the district expect? That's a question for your district to decide. So these are just some conversation starters. These bullets that are under this sclead.org review are just conversation starters. Try to integrate summaries of key SCTS process skills at every possible, um, in every possible way. Post best practices for scripting, calibration techniques, and conferencing. The big takeaway here from this slide is that SCTS 4.0 is still a new system for us. And districts have to continue their efforts to ensure teachers and principals understand the order in which things occur, what will be required by the district, and of course, how to access the system used to manage teacher evaluation in your district. So now the next slide is specific for those who are not using SC Lead to manage the day-to-day -day process. So if your district is not using SC Lead to manage the 4.0 rubric evaluation process, this slide's for you. We have a few less tips for you because the process you're using to manage evaluation data will be unique to your district. We would just encourage you to broadly communicate what the evaluation data management process is for educators in your district and ensure that their evaluation data will be reported to the state at the end of the year. Please ensure that teachers in your district know that although they don't have to sign anything in the system, you're working primarily offline or in another system, teachers can still go into SC Lead and register an account and review all of their past historical data. At this time in the school year, business level, building level principals or district staff should ensure staff rosters are up to date in PCS. So if you're not using SC Lead every day, you're going to use the upload process. Make sure that your school staff rosters in PCS are up to date. Um, have data from PCS will make it into SC Lead and ensure that accurate rosters will be there so that there's less cleanup time you're going to have to do once it's time to upload data at the end of the year. As an update, our, programs are, our programmers at RANDA are working on the upload process, and we should have additional information to share soon. But for now, your part is to ensure that school rosters in PCS are up to date. Also, districts not using all parts of SC Lead to manage the process should integrate a review of the district's business rules regarding the new evaluation system in some kind of existing training or using an existing communication tool. Although you're not using SC Lead to manage data, principals should know the scoring approach used by the district. They should still know how teams are formed. Please be sure to discuss any guidance, same idea, on this retention of scripting notes and district expectations regarding those scripts. Again, that's a question for your district to decide. So we so here, we're just sharing the same conversation starters, best practices for scripting, calibration techniques, and conferencing to kind of guide your local conversations. The big takeaway for you, the upload group, is that SCTS 4.0, still new, 
You still have to continue efforts to uh, ensure that teachers and principals understand the new teacher evaluation system. So when we think about planning going forward, regardless of which bucket you're in, here are two tip, a few tips for you to consider. We recently gotten some initial focus group feedback from about 20 teachers from across the state on the rollout of the evaluation system. Our big takeaway is that teachers are not clear on the overall, over, overall evaluation process. I think it's fair to say that some are either ill-informed or confused about what happens and when. So accurate information is needed to get down to that classroom level rank and file teachers. There was mixed feedback regarding the fidelity of the pop cycle in some schools. And some teachers reported they knew little about SC LEAD. They knew a little bit about SC LEAD, but didn't know how it applied to them in their context. So as you plan for the spring, please, Think about effective teacher information structures in your district and utilize those to talk about SCTS 4.0, that's first and foremost, and then SC Lead if you're using it to manage the process. We're aware that we have only had this system statewide for about five months, but we're also halfway through the school year. So if you're dependent on principals to push the word out to teachers, you may need to take another look and see what's actually being shared at the school level. Please consider distributing specific literature on SCTS and SC Lead, or sharing slides that principals can use with their staff in January or February. That time of January, February is we're really suggesting that you get something in the hands of teachers and principals during that time frame. While I'm running through these remaining suggestions, if you try the communication technique that was successful in helping push the word out to your district, go ahead and stick it in the chat box. You've had something that worked, that got all the way down to teachers, that was really, that was really helpful for you to make sure your teachers and principals knew about SCTS. Toss a couple of examples in the chat box as we run through these um, reminders. So please, plan for um, getting the word out for your teachers. You should plan at least one three-day district evaluator training in spring 2019, if it's necessary. Most, if not all, districts have a trainer in your district to utilize uh, to train new evaluators. So if it's a need, go ahead and start the, the planning for that. You should, at some point in the spring, confirm the roster of currently certified and evaluated, so you're not caught in August with not enough people to go around. And of course, plan for that one-day SCTS training for new hires um, so that you will be up and ready to go as you go through the summer and to, into early fall of next year, and that you will be able to introduce the evaluation system to your new hires. Yes, that, uh, oh, Faith, thank you for answering those questions. Faith, keep it up with me. Thank you, Faith. So here are some teaching training tips. I'm not going to read those to you. I would like to highlight school leadership team meetings, professional learning community meetings, staff meetings, different ways to get the word out. Here is a screenshot of one of the resources that's available for uh, online. It takes a teacher using SC Lead from the beginning of the process to the end of the process. We also have tons of material around um, SCTS 4.0 rubric available online. We really need to make sure that you're helping us push that down to the classroom level. So Faye, you've been great about answering some of the questions. Do we have any other specific questions we wanted to um, talk about? The, the, the only thing I'd clarify is, is in the spring, um, in the you're, spring really you're really just about thinking about when am I going to schedule that one day, that one day teacher training for new hires. And I think what the year is that you have one, you, have one, you, have one, you plan in the summer for everyone that was hired on kind of a normal timeline. But then you must like someone from out of my state who might not have experience or didn't come through your induction program. But then there's probably one you need to put in for late hires as well. 
All right. So we have a question um, from Anita. And do you want to go ahead and address this one, Lila, or you wanted to do it in sure. Sure. a later uh, time? We're while we're trying, I believe the question was twofold. Um, one um, was, one and if you scroll up in the chat, you can see it. One was, um, are we to be using SCE for all of the reporting of records that we used to do in ADS? Um, and the answer to that is yes, and we'll absolutely be taking you through that during this webinar. Um, the second thing was, what if I am seeing something different inside of SC lead um, that I'm seeing inside of ADS? Some of you have been contacted if they're a duplicate. And records, and records inside. Can you mute your, can you mute your um, mic? Um, there are some duplicate edu uh, educator records that were created by ADS, and your adept contact has contacted you to delete those. If you are seeing a duplicate record or a record that there's a discrepancy between ADS and SC Lead, Anita, if you could let us know, um, we've got a plan for duplicating some of those. Um, SC Lead is absolutely the system of record. Um, if you are in SC Lead and checking your evaluations and you notice you created two evaluation records for someone, we would love for you to also help us with those duplicates so we're not getting those because it does um, interfere with the integration back to SC Lead or back to um, the certification system. Thank you, Lila. So we also had um, Emily saying that I truly appreciated the resources available so far, including the setting up resources. Are there available resources regarding consensus, finalizing preliminary cycle, et cetera? So um, I believe we're going to touch on some of those in today's webinar um, on how to enter like results. But we will take into consideration that request just as with the request on the report. Um, Aaron had mentioned um, if you could extract uh, regarding preliminary consensus. So we are going to touch on something uh, regarding consensus today. So hopefully that will be helpful. And then if it's more specific, um, contact your regional support. And then we'll try to drill into what is it exactly that you, you need from us. And we'll try to work on that. Um, and I think we're ready to move on. We have uh, the response to Emily's um, question about the one-day training that was um, presented earlier by Julie. And that is uh, the orientation that you need to conduct prior to the start of the evaluation cycle. Now we're moving forward to Kim's portion. All right. So, All right, for, the so next for the next couple of minutes, we're just going to dig a little deeper into what's available in SCLE. Some of the things that you guys often have questions about. All right. All right, so professionalism ratings, as a reminder, districts do have the option of completing professionalism during both cycles, but it is only required in the spring. So even if multiple scores are entered, the only the spring score, which is the last score that will be entered, will be calculated into the educator's overall rating. Um, another reminder for professionalism is that only the person that is designated in SC Lead to complete professionalism should be entering those scores. So even if you're the principal, you have a principal in a building, um, if he's not the person that's been assigned professionalism or she's not the person that's been assigned professionalism, um, if they've assigned that role to the assistant principal, if they go in and complete professionalism, we still need that assistant principal going in because they're the ones who've been assigned that task and we won't be able to complete that evaluation without them assigning those professionalism ratings. Um, letter of agreement was another question that we've heard frequently. Um, districts wanted a feature where educators on letter of agreement would have access to student goals. So that feature has been enhanced in SC Lead. Um, so educators on a letter of agreement do have the option of completing their SLOs and or GBEs in the system. Um, any processes outside of that for these educators can be completed offline. And that documentation can be added to the system via adding an attachment. Um, remember that this is completely up to the district. This process is optional for letters of agreement, as they are not required to complete these processes. In 
All right, another frequently asked question we've heard as of lately have been about waiving observation. Um, so we do know that there are two groups of educators for whose second semester observations can be waived. Um, the first group is that continuing formative group, people who are going through that fifth year research or comprehensive educators. So if all of their indicators are rated proficient or exemplary in the first semester, so we're looking at threes and fours, if that is all um, taken care of in the first semester, proficient or exemplary, and if everything has been signed off on, completed, all observations have been completed, the consensus meeting for those who are consensus, once that's been completed and signed by everybody um, on that team as well as that educator, you will then see the option to skip the evaluation, and that's what you see here in this screenshot. Um, for annual summative educators who are from out of state with a professional certificate based on reciprocity, that option will also be available to skip the second semester if they are proficient or exemplary in the first semester. That feature is not currently available, but it is something that will be available soon in SC Lead. Um, remember that if these conditions do not all apply, then the option to skip will not appear. So the next two slides are specific to districts using the consensus scoring approach. Um, after each evaluator completes his or her individual observation, the evaluation chair will create a consensus meeting. Um, observer scores for each observation now transfer to the consensus meeting scoring page. And I know this is something that we heard a lot from districts. It was about we were having to click back and forth between the scoring page, between one observer score to the consensus page, where you'll now see, as in this screenshot, these are automatically populated into that consensus scoring page. Um, so once the consensus scores are selected, they will also populate on the consensus meeting post-conference page, which you also see an example of here in the screenshot. So that's a few less clicks for you people who are on consensus getting back and forth and entering those scores. So also for our consensus district, um, currently the post-conference form in the consensus meeting includes a section for both the educator and the evaluation chair to add an area of reinforcement and refinement. Um, currently this section is not active for educators and this section will be removed from the form. Um, as far as the evaluation chair, that section is going to remain available um, and that will be a place for evaluators kind of come up with the consensus reinforcement refinement that they may identify for that educator. Of course, after each post-conference, a reinforcement and refinement will be shared with that educator <coughs> by the person who observed them. But once those evaluators come together for consensus, if they want to consent and determine a specific area of focus or kind of narrow the focus for that educator, that'll be a place where that can be done for that reinforcement and refinement for both evaluators. All right, and we know that as we are nearing the end of the first semester, wrapping that up, we're seeing a lot of situations where educators are retiring or resigning. Um, you do have the option of closing an evaluation and SC lead in that situation. Um, if an educator is not able to complete the evaluation cycle, you will complete that process by locating the educator in question, um, you can search for the educator by name or CID, um, locate the current year's evaluation, select details for that evaluation, you would click on the settings on the left side of the screen, and then at the bottom of that page you will see the mm -hmm. option to close the evaluation. Um, and a newer feature here that's just happened in the last week, you'll see that once you select close the evaluation, the person who's closing the evaluation actually can now go ahead and enter the recommendations for the next which you see here on this slide. So that's one less place that you'll have to go. You won't have to go straight to the results page to put that information in. <laughs> um, we are going to be adding a signature requirement for the person closing the observation. And um, also another thing to remember is that if an observation is closed in error, it can be reopened. At this time, we're going to do a small break for questions. Are there any questions you guys have that you have not yet posed? 
If not, if not, not if they are going to kind of take us to some of the questions that, that you guys already have already posed. All right, so I'm just going to backtrack a little bit because other districts might benefit um, to some answers to questions that were um, given. So let's see. Okay, Erin says, what is the long-term plan for the integration of PCS, CPS, ADS, and SD lead? Um, Lila responded to that, um, that ADS is going away. Um, PCS and CPS are being redesigned, and we are involved with RANDA in those conversations and eventual pilot, pilot and rollout. Um, follow up on that, our PCS coordinator would like to know if there is an update on the timeline. She understood it to be this year. Um, Lilith's response is that we, I, uh, I believe, I think the new CPS, PCS, is set for this summer. Uh, we have a few comments. Um, Erin said, the closure reasons are very limited. Is it possible this is going to be expanded or can include another section with a description? So Erin, thank you for that. Again, with any suggestion, our team has to meet, and then we'll think of how we can go about any of the suggestions from the district, if it's doable, or how we could go about it. If it so please um, stay patient, and we will, you know, give you updates as we get to that part of our our design process. Um, and and um, I, I think I this think was this what was you were referring to, but just to follow up the trio about, about having to having quote unquote, unquote skip, skip the professional, skip professional goals, goals under the student goals and professional goals section if all you're using is the SLO <laughs> part. As long as you don't enter anything under professional goals or add a professional goal, your bubble, your status bubble, um, will close in for 100% with just it being uh, SLO data entered. So as our sig are the signatures for the preliminary mid-course and final conference. So you don't have to quote unquote skip the professional goals piece like you skip um, other parts, uh, skip SLO. As long as you don't put anything in there, it's not going to um, impact your ability to get 100% for the SLO uh, components, uh, status levels, or 100% uh, for those parts. So that just yeah. wanted to kind of clarify that. All right, Erin has a follow-up. Is the close evaluation option available to all district level administrators? I believe that it is um, to the district level administrators. I think it's actually only if they are the adept lead for their district, uh, because closing the evaluation really should be managed by one central person. That's a good point. All right, we can keep moving at this point. Okay, um, thank you. Um, all right, so hey, this should make a lot of people happy. This is another enhancement to scd.org. It's our evaluation record correction. And this is an homage to um, a music icon, formerly known as ABS Update. So regardless of whether you're using SC Lead to manage the evaluation process, or if you'll be using the upload feature at the end of the year, all evaluation record corrections will be entered and completed in scleads.org. We're not entering uh, updates in ADS anymore. Everything is happening in scleads.org. So whether you're using SC lead on a day-to-day -day basis or not, using the upload feature, all of your record corrections that you would normally have submitted to us via email or via ADS, you now have to enter in scleed.org. So this is new. We have referenced it before. We told you it was coming, and so here it is. So these next slides will show you how to submit an update to your regional contact online in scleed.org. And the system already knows which districts go to which and associate. Um, so as long as you can fill in the information, and I'll show you where that is, it's going to come directly to our um, accounts in the SD lead. So when you get ready to submit evaluation co record corrections, you are looking for this icon, this wrench, and then the words request 
correction. Look for this icon to begin the evaluation record correction process. This icon will be located on the status page inside of each evaluation record. The important point to remember is that you have to find the teacher and then access the year that you want to edit. So there are two ways to get into this process, two ways to access the corrections icon. So option one, you see it written here on the left. Look for the request icon, the little wrench, within an evaluation record. There are several ways to get to an evaluation record. You know this. You can get there by going to the school, clicking on the staff, selecting the teacher's name, selecting details by that particular year, or you can search the entire system using the evaluations link in the teal bar up top. However you choose to get there, you need to be inside of a teacher's record. So that's what you have here on the left. A second way to get into, inside a teacher's record and begin the corrections process is to look for the corrections link in the top teal bar at the top of the page. Click on that link and you'll be taken to a corrections page, which you see here outlined in red. The page is bigger than this, but that's just the top part. Where you will then select, which is where you see my red arrow pointing in that red box on the right there, select new correction request. So you go to Corrections in the teal bar, click on New Corrections Request. Once you click on that, you will be directed to an Instructions page, which you see highlighted below there in green. And there's an orange button at the bottom. So review the instructions. Once you review that, you're going to click that orange bottom, orange button, labeled Find Evaluation and Start New Request. You can't see it, but that's what that orange button is labeled with. Find evaluation and start new request. Um, click the orange button to search the system for the evaluation record you want. So whether you choose option one, going into the record by whatever method you choose, or option two, which allows you to search the entire system at one time, using that, it's going to take you back to the evaluation page. You need to be within the evaluation record you want to edit. You have to find the teacher and make sure you have the correct year. Be sure, 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 sure to confirm the year. So once you've located your teacher, you'll need to click on where I have this red arrow, request correction. Always verify the year and the teacher's name, which are at the top of the page. Click on the request. Correction icon at the bottom of the left hand column I've indicated here in the red arrow. This will direct you to the correction page. So here is what the first page of the new correction form looks like. Very, very similar to our ADS form. Please remember, don't forget to scroll down. That happened to me a couple of times. There is much more information on this page than what will appear in your initial view. Scroll down. It's a long page. Make sure you scroll to access all the fields. First of all, confirm you're in the right year. And then notice there's a current value column and a correct value column. I've got them indicated here by green arrows. Both of these columns will initially populate to what, what's currently in the system. If you want to change or revise the data element, you're going to use the drop-down boxes under the correct value, which is also highlighted in green, to make any changes. So this represents what the rest of the page looks like there, outlined in black. Those are very familiar pay, uh, fields, overall status, things that you've already recognized. We've just digitized our old ADS form, so the information here is nothing new. At the bottom of the page, right above that button that says Cancel, if you are submitting um, a rubric scoring form for a summative evaluation, you'll still have to indicate what those indicator level ratings are. So okay. at the bottom of this page where it says Rubric, you'll have to identify what rubric the evaluation used. 
What you see highlighted in red is a drop down of all the rubrics that will be available in the system for you to uh, submit a correction for. These are more options than you will ever need, but we've provided them all here for you uh, based on the age of whatever record you're seeking to correct. So just recognize once you finish the top part of the form, if you're submitting a summative evaluation, you'll have to still submit those indicator level ratings and you'll need to select the form first and then click next. So on the, the green box on the left, um, simply is the same APS indicators for safety uh, record corrections that you may be submitting this year. You fill in the rubric <coughs> indicator for summative evaluations and click submit. Then in red, you'll notice you'll get a confirmation box. So you're going to make your changes, submit the rubric if needed, and then you're going to have this confirmation screen appear. Notice that the drop-down boxes are gone under the green arrow. There are all of the selections that you made. If you didn't make a selection, it's going to remain whatever it was initially. You'll need to review. So once you've had a chance to enter all of your information, make sure that you review uh, the entire page. Okay. So upon reviewing, I wanted to make this big. I apologize for being a little blurry, but there are three tabs on the review page. The first tab is all the information that you've just changed or updated. You'll see another capture of the rubric, if you had any summative indicators, the summative ratings that you had to report. And then when you see this uh, green arrow, that's the submit button. So during the review, make sure that you, that you click on each of these three links. That's critical. Because only under the submit, which I have highlighted here by a green arrow, will you be able to submit the form to us. And notice you'll have to enter your contact information, your email, your phone number, so we'll know how to get in contact with you. You'll press submit at the bottom. So most updates submitted this year will be safety updates for 1718. Starting today, we ask that you submit any evaluation updates in SC Lead, whether you're using SC Lead to manage the process or not. If you've recently <coughs> submitted us uh, updates, no worries. We will work off of what you've already submitted, but today going forward, it needs to be done in SC Lead, please. If you have any concerns about that, please contact your education associate. SC Lead has pulled all historical information from ABS, so we should be able to find any historical record and make changes in SC Lead, so don't worry about that. If your district is using, um, so for any changes made to current SCTS evaluations, you can go ahead and make them in SC Lead right now. Um, you can remove signatures, make necessary updates, or that whoever signed it would have to remove their signature. You can make updates and re-sign the documents if changes are made to 18, 19 records. But for the historical records, um, go ahead and stick those inside of SC Lead and we will um, they'll pop up on our screen and we will um, execute them. Feel free to call us and we will walk you through whatever steps you are not clear about as far as this correction process is concerned. So any questions? All right. As you go through, once the need arises, please reach out and contact us and we'll walk you through the first couple with no worries, okay? Oh. Okay. Yes, it looks like we have a few questions while you were presenting. And just to um, share, um, Aaron was asking for special area evaluation, getting an update. Um, Lula has responded that we are not changing for 1920, but we will have stakeholders um, get together so that we will have it for 2021. Uh, moving forward, real quick, I just wanted to touch uh, back on the professional learning library. Uh, thank you to those who have already used um, this resource inside SLE.org. Again, it is currently free to use this school year. If you have the opportunity, please use it and provide feedback to your Effectiveness Regional Support Education Associate. We would like to know if this tool is useful to you and how you have integrated it into your professional development. Um, 
So just real quick, if you haven't started using the Professional Learning Library, I encourage you to view our Professional Learning Library webinars uh, for step-by-step -step instructions to access the library. Um, you can go to our Effectiveness website, um, go to Communications. Um, here on the left side on the screen, you'll see it. Um, click on to Virtual Office Hours and FAQs. So there you will find the PowerPoint presentations and um, videos. Uh, towards the bottom, um, you will actually find other virtual office hours materials, and that includes um, two lists of videos that are currently available um, to you. So I just wanted to share one concern that our colleagues ha have um, shared with us regarding their use of the professional learning library. Uh, it's, it's about the accessing the videos. So if you have trouble accessing um, the library, please try using Chrome as your web browser. Um, also, if you receive an error message, um, just as shown on the screen, please type your initials for first and last name and hit accept. That should correct the problem. Um, but if not, let us know uh, if you have any further concerns about the library. Now we go into a couple of adept implementation reminders. First of all, we'd like to talk to you about the December calendar check. Check your adept plan calendar to make sure that you're on target to meet your deadlines. You should be finishing up the beginning of the year conferences, and your, your fall classroom observation. <coughs> Double check your ADEPT plan and make sure that your communication with your schools is clear. Communication with your principals is essential. We have principals who call and ask us when their observations should be complete, and we have to refer them back to you so that you can check the ADEPT plan calendar. So please, 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 we totally encourage your communication with your school. A few reminders. Induction counts are due the last week of January. The final evaluation results are due June 20th, 2019. Please submit any changes to your ADEPT plan to your regional contact before changes are made in writing or practice. So please communicate with your regional contact. This slide When using the consensus scoring approach in SCLead.org, ratings must be entered for each observation. However, ratings will not be visible to the educator even when the post conference form is signed by an individual observer. A consensus meeting observation summary must be added at the end of each observation cycle by the evaluation chair. If you notice the red arrow pointing to add consensus meeting. Under the consensus approach, credentialed evaluators will be able to enter scripting notes, indicator scores, areas of refinement, refinement and reinforcement, and reflections and observer comments. The only thing visible to the educator after each observation will be the reinforcement and refinement areas. However, only ratings entered on the consensus meeting observation summary form will be shared with the educator. The scores from the consensus meeting observation summary are visible to the educator once the evaluation chair signs the consensus meeting observation summary form. The consensus meeting observation summary will be considered complete once all evaluation team members assigned to observe and the educator have signed the consensus meeting observation summary form. Remember, as Dr. Howard told us previously, the educator cannot add a reinforcement or refinement at the consensus. But if the team decides that it is in the educator's best interest to add these, they can be added by the evaluation chair at that time. 
The consensus ratings from the preliminary and final observation cycles will be averaged together to calculate the domain scores. These scores display in the results section of the evaluation record for the teacher and evaluation team, as you see here. Now moving into average approach. Average approach differs from consensus approach in a few ways. SCLEAD.org will average all indicator scores within a domain from all completed observations, provided the observation was not entered as a walkthrough. The average for each domain will populate on the results tab of the evaluation record. The observation is now complete. The educator can see the post-conference form and enter his or her signature. This process would be repeated for each observation conducted throughout the year. The average of the indicators will calculate automatically in the results section of the evaluation record as seen here on the right. If you have any questions about consensus or average, please feel free to type in your question in the chat box or reach out to your ed associate. All right, so you'll see here that our next office hour session will be held on January 7th of 2019. So we look forward to see, seeing you guys in the room. Um, remember to invite your colleagues to join in as well. Please come ready with your questions and know that we'll address whatever concerns you have between now and then during that time. Um, if you have any needs prior to then, of course, feel free to reach out to us. We are always ready and willing to help. Now let's get some last minute questions. You've heard a lot of information. Um, you have been very patient and participatory. I want you to know we, we really appreciate that. Um, no, can I take them back one screen? I just want to show something that was the FAQ. Sure, of course. Um, Faye, can you roll back maybe two to so one slide? OK. Um, yeah, this is good right here. Go back, I'm sorry. Go back one more. This was a little bigger. Oh, perfect. Thank you. So right here on the results page, we got a couple of questions, and we're going to see where it says observations of professional practice. We're going to modify this screen a little bit just so it's clearer that for each of the domains you see listed, and when you complete the process, the professionalism domain will also appear. You do have the score. That's the average from all the indicators in that particular domain. But when you see this third column that says weighted, what the system has already done is multiply the domain score by the weight. And we all know that's 50% for instruction, 20 for planning, 20 for environment, and 10% weight for professionalism. So when you see these um, scores under weighted, the system has already multiplied or taken the weight from the raw score. So this is actually a column of weighted scores. And when you add the weighted scores together, you get the overall composite rating, which you see down here at the very bottom. So if someone asks you, well, where's the 20% or why, you know, they couldn't, can't put all the pieces together for the numbers that are displayed here. So what we're going to do is edit this a little bit. So instead of calling this third column weighted, we're going to call this column weighted score to kind of drive home the point that the 20, the weights for each of the domains has already been considered under weighted. And also kicking around maybe behind instruction planning, environment, and professionalism, go ahead and actually type out what those weights are so people can make the connection. OK, so just wanted to talk about another enhancement that you're soon to see. OK, thanks, Will, for letting me do that. Any questions? All right. All right, Julie, so we have a question from Anita. And she actually, it's, it's more of a request to please um, 
first one was to please repeat the due date for induction one, and our response is February 1st. The other one from Anita was um, if you would please review the consensus approach. So since we have time, if you could go over that. Um, I mentioned that if we didn't have time, you'll, 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 you'll reach back directly. But since we have time, maybe Beverly could go back or any of the um, of our I'm other ones here. Each evaluator will go in, yeah, yeah, you have two people on the team. Each evaluator will go in and conduct their separate observations. At the, end, At the of those, end of those, and it's only for the At the end of those separate observations, the only thing that they share online and face to face is the area of reinforcement and refinement. So why do you not necessarily want to share scores at that point? Because the team has not had the chance to consent. So once the two-person team, three-person team comes together at the end of the semester to come up with a consensus, that's when you click on this add consensus meeting. So here, principal and elementary staff have already gone in individually. The areas of reinforcement and refinement have popped up for the teacher to view. No scores have appeared yet because the team hasn't met to figure out what those final scores are going to be. Once the chair clicks on add consensus meeting, they're going to see the form you saw before where the team will be able to see the scores from the principal, the scores from elementary staff, and then they'll have a blank column of, of, um, of ratings so that they can come up with a consensus rating. At that consensus rating, um, the teach, well, at that consensus rating, if the team wants to add another set of areas of reinforcement and refinement at the end of the semester or at the end of the year, the team can choose to do that, and that's what Dr. Howard talked about um, after her process. But then the system will average the uh, consensus ratings from the preliminary and the consensus ratings from the final to get the overall composite. So we can certainly um, walk through that. Um, we need a, a little closer on, on the, off the phone, offline. Okay, was there another one? At the end of okay, we had some questions on the skipping. So um, Sharon was asking on how to waive that. Um, the general rule is that if you are scored if the, all scores, each indicator um, is proficient or higher, then the skip option will appear. Um, for consensus, even if it's a one-man team, you still have to hold a consensus meeting and meet that criteria, general criteria of all indicators being proficient. Uh, we did touch on this, I believe, on our last um, effectiveness um, communication. Um, and I was about to type in, um, Dr. Howard was sharing, um, we are still currently working on the skip option for the annual um, summative. Um, that specifically like relates mostly to the out-of-state um, educators who have been granted professional certificate and they could, they according to the regs, you know, they could also skip the final evaluation. But right now, we haven't um, um, made that active yet, but we are working on that. Um, Dr. Howard was also sharing that make sure, of course, signatures are there for every form so that um, your observations will show complete, and then the system will know to generate the skip option for the second semester. And, and just to clarify, that the ability for the district to waive the evaluation in the spring are for fifth year um, Comprehensive evaluation for uh, uh, continuing contract teachers who are uh, in a year of your certification and their conditions around which the skip will even work. The system knows that you have to have all indicators for that particular educator in the fall proficient or high. So we don't like to talk about numbers. But if, but the, if teacher the teacher has a two-year-old two one, one, you're not, you're not going, going that continuing contract teacher in their fifth-year comprehensive fall semester observation has a two or one, you're not going to be able, able to skip the spring semester. You're going to have to go back in and conduct another op cycle for them in the spring. 
And then that other caveat is for, is that how our MPLA talked about, for those annual teachers who are from out of state on professional teacher certificates. That's that other small little sliver that um, sufficient or higher for those educators also will allow you to skip in the spring, but we haven't built that in yet. So I'm just going to keep those educators in the back of your mind. So we have Janice. Um, she said that for consensus, wouldn't it be better to have a consensus reinforcement and consensus, I believe, refinement um, so the teacher knows which of the two reinforcements and which of the two ref refinements, one from each observer to concentrate on for improvement and the next observation. Do you want to take this, Julie? You want me to um, share what I shared with the district yesterday who had a similar question? All right, so for each observer, there are to, to conduct a pop cycle, but if you're on consensus, you're not sharing the scores. Um, each observer will have to identify the reinforcement and refinement. So what I suggested was that you could actually um, hold your observations and your um, consensus meeting as soon as possible so that you can identify just the one that you agree on um, as a final reinforcement or refinement for that educator to focus on. So on the consensus um, form, the evaluators do have the option to just identify one um, reinforcement and one refinement. And if anybody else wants to help yeah, clarify. I'll just add that, of course, once they have their individual observations, there is going to be an area of reinforcement or refinement noted based on that observation. But the reason why we allow that to be there for the consensus meeting as well is, like they said, because if they want to come to an agreement, okay, I've identified this as a reinforcement. Evaluator 2 has identified something different. Once we've had a chance to get together and speak, we really feel like if that educator focused on this one particular area for reinforcement, it would help move that educator's practice forward. So this is what we would focus on as an overall reinforcement or refinement for this educator, which will be a part of that consensus process. So one other thing Erin was saying, she just wanted um, some focus on the results part of the consensus. Um, did you want to speak on that, Julie, before we um, and have that as the last one? OK, so Anita and Erin um, in Charleston have that same question. And we do have another one that just popped up from Tria. And again, it's about. Um, it looks like consensus. Tria, so it's, it was consensus and average that you're asking? So, so I, I think, think, Tria, what you're asking is can we have different, um, can we have different scoring approaches for different contract levels? Uh, you were able to do that this year in your debt plan. You'll be able to do that next year in your debt plan as well. Um, that's absolute, and that's the case in many districts. There are quite a few districts who said, when we have one evaluator, we want to be an average, and when we have more than one, we want to have a consensus. These questions have been great. Um, we've still got some questions uh, coming in. We are going to monitor those relatively quickly. Um, but we want you to know, um, so we can uh, fast forward to our contact page in the presentation. CCBA. Okay. So here's our information. Um, if you do not know which uh, education associate you are linked to, you can call any one of us and we'll let you know who your contact is, although most of you have heard from us um, with bi monthly. That's another key as to who you're contact is, but feel free to reach out to us about any of these questions, about submitting corrections, about when to skip, who to skip, what should it look like, what should I be submitting at this point, um, follow-up questions about induction account, closing, um, closing evaluation records, um, what kind of training uh, would be best for our uh, teacher, re uh, teacher uh, reboot in the spring, just to share more information about uh, SC lead and SCTS. Um, 
feel free to reach out to us. We are here. Go ahead and get your questions um, in the chat box. We'll either respond to you directly or um, send something out in our about monthly to address what questions you have. So if all hearts and minds are clear. Thank you very much. We're not going to hold you. We're seven minutes over, and we want to be respectful of everyone's time. So thank you for joining us. Call us, email us, and we're going to stick on the line and, and take a few more questions in the chat box, uh, and then we will address them as need be. And just to pick up on the last two quick questions, Erin, mm -hmm. there is a spot for you to enter GBE results for special areas, so you have them on a, you know, continuing GBE, you are able to put their results into SC Lead the same way that we would for anyone else. And for the rest of the questions, we'll make sure to um, pick them up off the chat and email them to you. Thanks so much.